causality is a big word. Pretty much what it means is what causes what, right? When we talk about causality in research, what we're trying to do is understand the relationships between causes and effects. We know that things happen in the world. We know that other things cause those things to happen. We want to know it. Um, oftentimes, social science researchers are driven by the notion to know what causes either things they like or things they dislike. Because if you know what causes them, maybe you can impact the outcome, right? So causality is pretty deep in most paradigms of social science. And uh, we often are motivated by curiosity about causal relationships. And this is really fundamental. But the thing is, how we think about causality is one of those things that helps define what paradigm we're working in. So when you're trying to make a determination about what paradigm a piece of work is in, or when you're trying to think about what your personal attitude towards the paradigms are, oftentimes thinking about causality is a good way to do that. So if we're gonna think like a positivist about causality, then we're gonna think about falsification, right? For a positivist, cause and effect are linear if sometimes iterative, right? One thing is a cause, the other thing is the effect. If that effect then has other effects, then it becomes a cause, right? So something can be a cause and an effect, but not in the same process, right? It can't cause itself. So there's a line order, right? And in some ways the linearity isn't, um, I mean, it's because time is linear, right? So things occur within time and so the causes are prior to the effects temporally, and then you get outcomes, right? So in order to get causality, we have to use deductive tests to figure out what the causes and effects are and what the relationship is, right? Um, now, you need a theory of causes and effects before you go rampaging around looking for deductive reasoning. You only test a cause to see if it causes the effect once you have a good idea what they are, you don't guess randomly, but you proceed deductively about testing it. And only deduction will allow you to see that something is causal. Induction will give you the theory, and then deduction will allow you to actually see if it's real, right? And so in a positivist framework, causes are called independent variables and effects are dependent variables. Um, sometimes people from other paradigms will bar borrow this term, right? Because it's very widely understood. Um, so, but I would say that, say, um, if someone refers to something as an independent and something as a dependent variable, the odds are they're not an interpretivist, let's say. Um, so a good example of positivist causality is the experiment, right? In fact, for positivists, this is the best form of testing of causality you can get, right? You do X to one group, you don't do X to the other group. If you see an effect in group X and you don't see that effect in group Y, congratulations, X is the cause, right? This is the, the standard they all wish they could aim for. Unfortunately, there are some things you cannot conduct experiments on. Um, positivists are sad about this. So next, let's think about realist caus causality, right? Um, again, uh, critical realists are interested in kind of explaining things, but they're less certain of their ability to make 100% generalizable claims because they're less sure that they can measure the world perfectly, right? And so realists make generative ca claims about causality, right? They don't want to say that X is the independent variable and Y is the dependent variable, right? Instead, what they want to say is that there's a mechanism that directs an outcome, right? There's a, some kind of system that is working here that makes the outcome happen, right? And so realists will generally make a causal argument in very specific terms. In this case, here are the elements that interacted to create the outcome, right? You can see those elements interacting, we can document them interacting, and we can explain logically why they would create the circumstance for the outcome. Right? They can also try to specify necessary and sufficient conditions. Okay, I've looked at a bunch of cases. You only get outcome U where you have R. You might, there are certain combinations of variables that will include it, but you gotta have R. 
That doesn't mean R is sufficient, right? So you might have R and nothing else, and you don't get R, and you don't get U, right? But uh, if you don't have R, no matter what else you have, you won't get U, right? The other thing is, is sufficient, right? Um, which is to say that um, if you have S, you will always get U, right? It's a sufficient condition to make it happen. Um, and so a causal story for a realist may be generalizable. They like when they are. They prefer for them to be. But if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, right? Um, realists are less confident in their ability to produce completely generalizable theories um, because they say there may be things I can't see and can't, uh, can't know here, right? Um, but nevertheless, they are trying to general to create generalizable theories, right? And many people who work on very uncertain political outcomes kind of follow a realist causality because they're like, look, I can't actually predict what's going to happen here, but I can tell you what made it happen last time. And so if you look at what made it happen last time, how can we think about making it happen again, right? So I know lots of public policy people who are functionally critical realists rather than positivists, right? Because... That's the most useful form of causality for them. And then what's going on with interpretivists? Well, the first thing is interpretivists are very comfortable saying, screw causality. I don't know what causes anything, right? I don't want to develop a generalizable theory. I want to explain. I want a strong argument with thick description that talks about the thing I am talking about, right? So interpretivists may just simply say, I don't care in response to the question about what causes what. Now, sometimes if you scratch an interpretivist, you will find a realist account of what happened, right? Um, you will find them saying, well, look, these circumstances worked together and produced this outcome, right? So you can get generative causality out of an interpretivist, but it's not their priority, right? Um, or they might just choose to describe a chain of events happening, right? Without necessarily saying which are the important causes or not, right? That's not what they're about because they really just want to understand meaning and, and broad global understanding of the phenomenon. But the other thing that interpretivists will do is they'll talk about what people perceive to be the causes of various outcomes. It doesn't matter if the researcher agrees with them, if everybody thinks that, or if it's at all plausible, right? So if an interpretivist is talking to someone who says, New Orleans get hits with, gets hit with hurricanes because everybody there is a sinner, and we're getting worse hurricanes now because God hates America because it likes gay people, all right? Now, the you know, the interpretivist researcher is unlikely to think that's a credible causal narrative of what happens that causes hurricanes. You know, they're likely to think that's a whacked out theory. But that doesn't matter because that person thinks it, right? They're not going to test and see if there's any correlation between pro-LGBT laws and hurricane strength because that, you know, there's no a priori assumptions that the interpreters will feel about that, but they will use it to explain their interlocutor's way of making sense of the world, All right? Something like that tells us a lot about what the person saying it actually believes and thinks and how they make their world make sense. And so it doesn't tell us anything about what causes hurricanes, but it sure tells us a lot about how... Uh, certain forms of Christianity work at a political level in the United States. Super useful, right? An interpretivist takes that for granted, says this is the sort of stuff I need to work on. It doesn't satisfy a positivist, right? And the realist is still going to be saying, but what causes the outcomes that these people engage in? Not just describing what they think, but what causes the outcomes they do, they produce. And the interpretivist might be interested in that, but the interpretivist's first answer is to thick description and really telling the story to make it make sense.